you would, if you'd stand up, shake somebody's hand, welcome them into church this morning. Amen. Worship with us this morning. Amen. We're excited about what the Lord's going to do. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side, holding your hand, so let your kingdom come, let it live in me, this is my prayer, this is my plea, let the worshipers arise. Bless the 
today. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise today. Oh, bless his name, yes. Bless his name, yes. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Bless his bless name. His name. Just run in and they are safe. Come on. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. His name is Jesus. He's the Savior. He's the healer. He's the Redeemer. He's my soon coming King. Oh, let's give him a standing ovation today. And where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in their midst. Oh, I feel him today. Oh, hallelujah. He is here today. I feel him already in this place. His blessings are upon us. He loves you today. He wants to bless you today. He wants to lift you today. He wants to heal you today. He wants to encourage you today. Amen. I'm glad to be in his house. And I'm glad that he is here. Not only am I glad he is here, I'm glad all of you have come and all of our guests have come to worship with us today. We're so honored to have you. Amen. 
is a very, very special day, and uh, uh, we're going to let you be seated in just a moment. But before we do, uh, turn to your neighbor and tell him I'm glad to see you in church today. Amen. Meet somebody. If you don't know their name, tell them your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. We're going to have a great time today. And uh, we're going to uh, pray for those that need prayer and those that are sick at the end of our service. We're going to receive our love offering at the end of our service today. So be aware of that. But today's a special day. And uh, I know this is going to make them very uncomfortable. But the scripture says, give honor to whom honor is due. Today is a day that we focus on the gifts that God has given us uh, for, for many years now, <laughs> amen, in Amanda and Kyle Kelly and their boys, Isaac and Cooper. We have been blessed. God has gifted us, and we are thankful for that. Amen. Now, Sister Amanda requested that they have special seating today. Anybody that knows Amanda knows that that's not the truth. In fact, we didn't tell them about any special seating knowing that we, well, we, we might not get any pushback, but this is not, this is not, um, this is something I know that may, they may be uncomfortable with, but uh, we want to honor them today. So I'd like to invite the Kelly family, uh, Amanda and Kyle and their boys, just to join us up here. Amen. We love and appreciate them. And uh, Amen. Isn't this a great couple? We have a lot of things planned today, reminiscing and a lot of sharing to do. And many of our guests are here today because of this day, and we're thankful for that. Uh, also, any of our guests that are here, um, uh, this is going to be the focus of our service today uh, because of the impact the Kellys have had on our church. They are leaving. In fact, their first service, I believe, Brother uh, Kyle said, was the 11th, I believe. So Tuesday night after Mother's Day, they'll have their first mission service as part of deputation. Now, they've had a number of services already. But they'll be hitting the road very quickly. And uh, I did say today, or we could go ahead and raise all their budget today, and they wouldn't have to travel any. <laughs> to which there was a response that the boys are not sure they want to raise all their money until there are certain spots or states that they're able to visit. So... If we do raise all their budget, we'll hold it back until they get to go to all the, they're going to see a lot of exciting things and uh, see God do great things. But uh, we've got a lot of things planned today, and so without any further hesitation, uh, we're going to get into what we have prepared today for Kyle and Amanda and this Kelly family. Let's give them one more hand today. Swansea, Wales. How does one reach that destination? We know that physically we can reach it if we map it out, whether by boat or plane. We could walk, and Cooper might even want to help us swim to get there. But how does one reach that destination in the spirit? What is the point of origin? We know we can pinpoint the physical location the Kellys are called to start a church, but this journey in the spirit to that location began many years ago. The story begins in Wheeling, West Virginia. Kyle Kelly made his grand entrance two weeks early on October 22nd, 1980. According to those who were there, not I, namely his parents, Kyle was a shining light. 
He was extremely intelligent, creative, mischievous, and always had a sense of adventure. Brother Kelly Sr. mentioned one time while visiting us in Salem that when he watches Cooper, it's like watching Kyle in action as a child all over again. Brother and Sister Kelly shared that Brother Kyle was an excellent student who always loved to explore new things. He loved to take things apart, but putting them back together, mm, that was another story. He loved to play soccer, as they call it across the pond. We call it football. He loved to get dirty, and the dirtier and muddier the football pitch, the better. When Kyle was three years old, his family answered the call to evangelize the country of Scotland, and they began deputizing in 1983. And Kyle was always faithful to help set up for their services. As their family pioneered the work in Glasgow, Scotland, <laughs> Kyle was faithful. <laughs> Kyle was faithful to help pass out tracts, pick up people for church, or set up the rented halls for service. Salem has also added onto this skill for his resume. Like many teenagers, he had moments of wavering and being tempted, but overall, he kept focused on the Lord and the kingdom of God. Now, Kyle was very, with the emphasis on very strong-willed as a child. These were very challenging times for his parents, but God knew that strong will could be challenged into standing for and doing what is right. Kyle always loved a good debate, and he was quite adept at winding his mother up, both humorously and seriously. Kyle's plan after high school was to attend university and pursue a profession involved with sports. Kyle had prayed that if it wasn't God's will to go to university, that they would not accept him. God, in his infinite wisdom, closed every door in spite of of Brother Kyle's academic excellence. The hand of God was on Kyle, and during one of the general conference services, his parents found him prostrate on the floor, committing his life to God. His fleshly desire was to attend university, but he knew God was calling him to attend Bible college. Kyle made the decision to attend IBC, and in spite of of his wild and crazy antics at Bible college, he stayed committed to the call of God on his life. Meanwhile, in Kinmondy, Illinois, Gary and Judy Jenkins welcomed a beautiful baby girl on September 14, 1979. Not many people were allowed to experience or view her beauty, though, because as soon as church was over, Gary would wrap her up in a blanket and get out the door. <laughs> he did not want anybody to touch or breathe on her. I can understand that. <laughs> the Jenkins family lived in the country most of Amanda's early life as a child. She had a pony she would ride and baby goats and pigs she would feed. Her favorite pet was a rat terrier named Bowser. She loved playing softball, better than most boys at the time, and spent lots of time swimming and playing in the pond. Amanda was baptized at the age of nine by Brother Kidder. He dunked her twice. We still don't know why. <laughs> she received the Holy Ghost at youth convention at the age of 12. She was always a friend to the underdog. She was not so friendly to Bryce, though, when he aggravated her. Rumor has it that she chased him with a knife at one point. <laughs> she enjoyed her days at Apostolic Christian Academy. After graduating from ACA, she attended and graduated from Salem Community High School. One could always find Amanda around the altar, committing her life to God. Her passion and commitment to find the will of God for her life was quite evident. She left Salem at the age of 17 to attend Indiana Bible College. This was a difficult transition for the whole family. While attending IBC her sophomore year, she met Kyle Kelly, 
And this is where the two separate threads of this story begin to merge, and it gets really exciting. Kyle met his beloved Amanda, and Amanda found her best friend. While Kyle continued to attend IBC, Amanda went on a missions trip to France and Scotland. Kyle graduated from IBC in 2002, and he and Amanda were married on May 11, 2002. He told his parents he planned the wedding close to graduation so they'd only have to make one trip. However, his parents knew he planned it that way because he was desperate to marry Amanda as quickly as possible. So the separate threads of this journey were now intertwined. A new household was formed, complete with an extended family. I'm actually up here to represent the Kellys um, from a family perspective. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out with, um, I'm going to go through all four, and I will start with Cooper since he's the youngest. So Cooper, um, I will start with that we've all learned that he is pretty much smarter than all of the rest of us. <laughs> Probably put together. And he knows it. He always follows a special diet. It's called the Cooper diet, and that's why he looks amazingly awesome. It keeps him from getting fat and flabby like the rest of us. <laughs> and most important, he's an amazing Bible quizzer. I mean, the kid would even do devotional on the weekends at his grandparents in the morning and read the Bible all by himself. The kid is basically a Bible rock star. Now move on to Isaac. Maddie and Isaac have grown up together so close, they're like brother and sister more than cousins, and she adores him. We've all watched him grow from a little boy to a big boy or young man, and it's amazing how we see that we each individually put into our kids and children the things of God, and then God blesses that. And then we see that come out in our children. He is a young man that has much compassion, a heart for people. And one small glimpse of this is the way that he prays for others in the altar. He's not ashamed. He's not embarrassed. He's not too proud. But he goes around just like his dad, and he ministers to people. And we're just seeing a glimpse of what's to come. And seeing these beautiful things in our kids gives us great encouragement, and it shows us how great our God really is. He's using and blessing our children and speaking to them in dreams and visions what amazing truth that we've been given and the love of God that we've been shown from our Savior. I'll move on to Kyle now. First of all, we both got married basically about the same time, six weeks apart. We all kind of started off together and kind of had kids around the same time. And we all lived real close, you know, for about 19 years before now this um, different season that God is bringing in um, to being. So they were both a huge support when my family and I went through major time of uncertainty with illness. We had a man and Kyle that was right there with us. A man and Kyle have also taken care of many things that Judy and Gary have come up when they were sick. Man and Kyle were there, actually probably before us. When um, there was reconstruction that needed done or Kyle thought it needed done, he was there. He was there just like a construction man. He's a preacher construction man. He <laughs> teaches Bible. He does it all. <laughs> a few things I've learned from Kyle is that he has a unique sense of style. <laughs> Sometimes he may come in dressed like he's like from the 70s. But, it, but it's just his unique style. I don't necessarily like to work with Kyle like in the kitchen like at Christmas at our place. Because he thinks he's a doctor running a surgery center. <laughs> but it's just because he wants everything to go right. But he really showed me one thing that I won't forget that I'll take time to mention is about Bible studies and the importance. He said to me one time, and it kind of irritated me at first, but it stayed in my mind, and I'm trying to get it down deep into me. He said, where does life come from? And then he yelled, the word. You want people to have life? Then teach them the word. In fact, I wrote it with a Sharpie on the front of my Bible study book. My brother-in-law has even specifically prayed for me, and I was healed on more than a few occasions. Now, anybody can come up 
and you obey the word of God or somebody prays for you and you can be healed just like Makai praying for me. But in this instance, Kyle prayed for me and I was healed. My lungs even opened up and I could feel it one day at camp when he was there ministering. I want to say this too because it's worth mentioning. A man and Kyle are upright. They are godly. They have the character of Christ. They don't discuss private things from other people's lives. They're faithful and they honor and they love people. I've seen my brother-in-law confronted with difficult circumstances in the church, and he kept us cool, and he responded in a truly Christian manner, and he is a true man of God. And then I want to end with Amanda. One of the first memories that I have of Amanda is when I was about 12 or 13 years old, and I was just becoming part of the youth group here. And I remember she gave me her senior picture with encouraging words on the back about how, how she was so glad I was part of the youth group and I was here. And I still remember that to this day. She is a woman of class and integrity. I can say this, too, about both of them. They're frugal with their spending. If they have something nice, you can be sure they found it on sale or they cut corners somewhere to get it. <laughs> They don't like to accept money from people, and that's because they're gracious. And Amanda had just gotten her home. I look at this, and they're leaving. She had just gotten her home and gotten add-ons, and Kyle was fixing things in the house to make it just right the way she wanted it. She finally got a car that she wanted forever and ever, and now she's giving that up because the Lord's calling them somewhere else. I can imagine this is not easy, leaving and going somewhere where you don't know people and where God is calling you. It's, it's really, it's, it's clear across the ocean, and, and things are really not perfectly clear right now, but they're stepping out in faith. And the Lord's asking them, leave this behind. There's a new season starting, and they have to just trust God. You just have to take that step in faith. Trust God, do it. But she has the courage and the faith to step out. I know this, too that it's probably taken a lot of prayer. She's very protective over her family, but that's because she loves them so much. She and Kyle are willing to give up what is comfortable and what feels safe here because God's calling them out. And I want to close with reading Proverbs 31 in honor of Amanda. Is there are characteristics in this proverb that describe her? And actually, the Lord gave me this yesterday as I was moving around the house and getting something. The Lord said Proverbs 31 for Amanda. So I want to end with this to honor her. And it's called, I'm, I'm starting with verse 10, a wife of noble character. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She's worth more than precious rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She will not hinder him. But she will help him all her life. She finds wool and flax, and she busily spends it. She's like a merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She gets up early before dawn to prepare breakfast for the household and plans the day's work for her servant girls. She goes out to inspect a field, and she buys it. And with her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic, and she's strong. She's a hard worker. She watches for bargains. Her lights burn late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor, and she opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household because all of them have warm clothes. She quilts her own bedspreads. She dresses like royalty in gowns of finest cloth. Her husband is well known for he sits at the city meeting with other civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments of sashes, and she sells them to the merchants. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs with no fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and kindness is the rule when she gives instruction. She carefully watches all that goes on in her household and does not have to bear the consequences of laziness. Her children stand and they bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised, rewarded for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare 
her praise. That scripture definitely epitomizes Amanda. Maybe not knitting her own bedspread, but all the rest of it. God began to guide and draw into ministry as they assumed the position of the youth pastors of Apostolic Society. Missions trips, youth events, youth services, conventions, conferences were all part of the youth retreat that continues to this day. The setting was Salem, Illinois. The cast of characters included Kyle and Amanda Kelly and a random assortment of teenagers complete with loud voices, questionable fashion choices, braces, glasses, and probably too much cologne, if we're honest. To this group, God sent the Kellys on assignment. It seemed like we were together forever, but looking back, I realize and appreciate the small, sweet span of time we all had together. I'm also amazed at just how many memories are packed in those years. And I put some of these together in Kodak moments, to borrow that old term. Kids, if you don't understand, ask your parents. They'll explain it to you. But it seemed like it fit. Moments frozen in time that together tell a story. Kodak moment number one. Our lime green youth room. It made a statement, that's for sure. As a 12-year-old, it was the coolest thing, I thought, because I'd never seen walls painted that color. And our walls still bear the marks of the drips of white. They're hidden behind layers of tan paint that's much more dignified, but it's still there. The traces of that youth room are still there. Kodak moment number two. Sunday morning youth services, Wednesday night Bible studies, and finding out all of the words Brother Kyle pronounced differently than us. For a bunch of kids in Salem, Illinois, it was probably one of the most cross-cultural experiences we'd had up to that point in our lives. Kodak moment number three. Youth hangouts crammed in the Kelly's apartment with three or four unlucky souls stuck sitting on the scratchy couch. Now, the couch did not start out this way. It was not the couch's fault. It happened when Brother Kyle decided to paint the couch. Yes, paint it. Because, number one, it was a steal for the couch. Number two, he just didn't like the color of the couch. So you paint it. Kodak moment number four. Notes and cards from Sister Amanda in her characteristic handwriting. Just like her, it's unique, almost uncopyable. And you always knew there was something special in that envelope. Kodak moment number five. Catching Sister Amanda's eye at the wrong time and laughing up a storm in the middle of prayer requests. We both had to leave the room. I don't remember what was funny. I don't remember who was giving their prayer request. Apologies to whoever that was. Sorry. But something just struck. And Sister Amanda was always ready to laugh and joke. Kodak moment number six. 
Youth services, messages, pre-service prayers, conventions, Bible studies, congresses, retreats, times in the altar, and our missions trip to the UK complete with three or four blown tires on the way on the vans on the way to the airport. Individually and collectively, these moments changed us. Our stories aren't over, even if this chapter of it is closed and long gone. We're not as young as we used to be. <laughs> but for our chapter in your story, you gave us a place where we could find love and a family and where we could hear the gospel. And that's what makes this part of the story worth telling. I'd like to welcome you all back up to your seats here. We don't have pictures for a little while, so. So connections were formed and friendships established as God continued to work on formulating the plan he had for the future. God wasn't finished. He added other characters to the cast. And on September 30th, 2005, Isaac joined Kyle and Amanda. He was the little brother to all the Bible school students at Harvest Bible College. All of us have enjoyed watching Isaac mature into a wonderful young man who will certainly be an asset to his parents and the work in Swansea. Isaac's honest approach to the Lord and others is refreshing. He has already exhibited and, de and demonstrated his servant's heart. On September 28, 2012, another addition to the family came along. Cooper is a credit to the saying, dynamite comes in small packages. And he'll let you know it. <laughs> From the moment he has arrived, he has been energy in motion, and what a valuable resource that will be in assisting his family and putting all that energy to work for God in the kingdom. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For those that do not know me, my name is Rebecca Becker, and it's my pleasure to speak to you today about the friendship. I have with the Kellys. Kyle, Amanda, Isaac, and Cooper, I've written this letter to you over and over. <laughs> How do I say what your friendship means to me in five minutes? To find the right words to describe how much I really love and appreciate you all has really flipped my brain upside down. <laughs> so many memories. And I'm tempting to accomplish this without crying. All right, we can do it. First of all, what is a friend? According to our social media accounts, we have hundreds of friends. But what defines a true friend? A British publication once offered a prize for the best definition of a friend. Among the thousands of answers received were the following. One who multiplies joys, divides grief, and whose honesty is inviolable. One who understands our silence. Here's another one. A volume of sympathy bound in cloth. A watch that beats true for all time and never runs down. Now for the winning definition. A friend is the one who comes in when the whole world has gone out. In addition to that definition, I would say that friends like the Kellys are people with whom you dare to be yourself. They ask you to put on nothing, only to be what you are. They do not want you to be better or worse. And when you are with them, you feel as a prisoner feels who has been declared innocent. You do not have to be on your guard. You can say what you think as long as it's genuinely you. <laughs> and when I'm with the Kellys, I can breathe freely. They understand it makes no matter. They like you. At least I think so. <laughs> right, for sure. <laughs> Through it all, I'm sorry, you can weep with them, sing with them, laugh with them, pray with them. Through it all and underneath, they see, know, and love you. The journey to get to know the Kelly family has been so much fun, to say the least. During the very first life development class at this church, our friendship began. If you could have seen me sitting there, I was like a withered flower. 
I was so thirsty. And it was Kyle and Amanda that brought water to my soul. And it was in those moments they helped me break out of my little box and become apostolic. (laughs) It was from that moment that our friendship grew through phone calls, texts, coffee visits, cards, journals, email, our relationship became knit together. The journey to true friendship with the Kelly family is one of the sweetest things in my life. You see, they are my chosen family. Winnie the Pooh once said, (laughs) anyone can show up when you're happy. But the ones that stay by your side when your heart falls apart are your true friends. It was in my hardest days you were there. You know those moments. You dropped everything to help a friend in need many times. Not because it was your job, because you love. That is written in John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Thank you for showing up when I needed you the most. Kyle, Amanda, Isaac, and Cooper have cheered my family on through discouraging seasons, celebrated with us on joyous occasions, and lifted our head and heart like no one else can. Thank you so much for opening your home to my family and sweeping us away, even if it was just for a moment. All right, Amanda. (laughs) Um, I've read every card that you have written to me this last few days. And this scripture summarizes how I feel. As it says in 1 Samuel 18.1, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, and the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. I am so grateful our friendship took the plunge into deeper waters. Amanda, thank you for every little window into your heart and for helping me to remove every brick from the wall I had built. I am a better me when I'm with you. Even though life seemed to only offer us snippets of time to communicate, I treasure each one, each one with you. A friend told me, (laughs) that's you. (laughs) For so many years, you weren't in my life, so long. It's like hopping on one leg, on one foot everywhere you go, while having two legs. Then the day happens, you figure it out, I have two legs. Life is easier with two legs. Life is easier with a best friend, with you. Amanda, I could talk to you all the day long. And at times I'm sure Kyle was wondering, how long does it take to drink coffee? (laughs) Right. (laughs) No. Thank you, Kyle, for letting me steal her away every once in a while. So today I honor the Kelly family. May God continue to shine his light upon you. I give glory to God for our friendship because you just can't beat a gift that God gives. You are the ones that came alongside my family to love, encourage, support, and uplift us through all the twists and turns of life. We love you all, but more than that, we really, really like you. Peace out. Rebecca caused us all to need our tissues today. Well, Kyle and Amanda's ministry at the Apostolics of Salem continued as they stepped into the role we know them as now, the assistant pastors. They began to invest themselves and their family into the ministry development of others and loyal support of the Gene family, training, teaching, personal notes, many other avenues impacted the lives of those interacting with them. I was holding it all together. Thank you, Sister Rebecca, for taking care of that. Amen. I don't want to miss anything, so I'm going to read what I have word for word, uh, because it's very important. Um, 
when Brother Gene announced on that Wednesday night uh, that the Kellys were going to be leaving Salem, caught me completely by surprise. I was standing up here, choking back tears, uh, swallowing my emotions like any good man will do. <laughs> uh, I wasn't surprised that Brother Kyle had heard from God uh, or that he was obeying his voice. Uh, just surprised that it meant he would be leaving the country. Uh, so uh, we have decided uh, not to be selfish by trying to keep them here against their will and God's will. Um, I guess we'll, we'll let God have his way. Um, I know God is going to use them in Wales, and we're completely behind them, uh, and we'll be praying for God's wisdom and continued anointing. Amen. Um, but I was asked to share uh, how Brother Kyle has helped me with ministry development. Um, now, there's no way I can remember every time that he has helped me or every time that he's encouraged me. But over the last week or so, I began writing things down as they come to mind. I told you I got to read this word for word. <laughs> so here, uh, here's just a few things. One of the biggest things, and when I look over the last several years, uh, my family came to this church. I was 18 years old. Uh, I was 2004. Um, so it's been... I'm 36 now, so I've been here half my life um, with Brother Kyle as uh, a friend, a mentor. Um, amen. Uh, but one of the biggest things that I uh, noticed uh, over the last several years was him being actively involved in things that are going to help, uh, help me develop or help anyone develop. Uh, but this is uh, about me. No. <laughs> I joke. I joke. <laughs> I jest. I can't remember all the events on leadership. I couldn't list all the ministry development uh, services or meetings uh, that Brother Kyle put together. Um, I can't count the number of times that he's encouraged me in the altar. Um, I don't remember every word that you've said, uh, but I, I have the memories that you cared enough to say them to me. Um, there are those that I remember and will never forget um, but just as others have said, that they, they are caring people. Amen. Um, I do want to share one specific event uh, that I was able to go to, and he probably already knows which one I'm going to share. Um, I'm not even sure what year it was. I know we came in 2004, so it was after that. Um, maybe 05, 2006, uh, but we drove a long way to get to this youth workers training. Do you remember what state that was? Kansas. I, I thought it was, but I didn't want to be wrong. Kansas City. Um, it was a weekend thing. Uh, I remember the services. They had panel discussions. I still have some of the notes at home that I had taken that weekend. Um, lots of good information. Uh, but the real story starts on the trip home. Uh, at some point, I don't know where we had a gas station, and we got back in uh, to start the car, and it didn't start. Uh, so it had to be towed to a garage. Thankfully, the tow truck driver was nice enough to give us a ride to a hotel. Unfortunately, there were no hotels. <laughs> and, I, and that's another detail I couldn't remember. What was going on in that town that... It was some kind of conference or a game or something going on um, that there were no rooms. There were no rooms anywhere. Um, but once again, our tow truck taxi driver told us that he knew a place where he knew there would be a room. <laughs> and that should have been the first clue. But when you're desperate, what do you do? So we, we rolled up to our motel and a motel is the one with the doors on the outside, I believe, right? It was a motel in our tow truck taxi. The first thing we see driving up is the vacancy sign flashing on and off inconsistently while missing a few letters, not, spe not spelling the whole word. No worries, though. Brother Kyle just slid the cash through the bulletproof glass, and we were, we were on our way to our room. Now, I, I didn't believe in time travel until we walked through the door of the hotel room. <laughs> and you know exactly what I mean. All the furniture was, was from the 70s, maybe. 
But we played it cool, and we did what anybody else would do in that situation. We put the dresser in front of the door. We <laughs> turned the TV on, left it on all night, and tried to get some sleep. But honestly, we weren't that worried because I think the tow truck driver lived just two doors down <laughs> in the same motel. So we were covered. Amen. Obviously, we made it home. We were okay. Uh, but ministry development has been one of the main focuses of this church. Um, Brother Kyle is always trying to encourage people to get involved, to grow. Uh, I remember the youth services where he would ask a few of us to preach on Wednesday nights in front of the adults. That was a big deal. Uh, it's the only time 12 pages of notes can turn into three minutes worth of teaching. <laughs> and if you're lucky. If you're lucky. But it was these things that helped push me and others to uh, develop in ministry. Uh, and let me say that ministry doesn't always mean teaching or preaching, but this, this staff is doing a great job at developing people's ministries no matter what they may be. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Uh, but I remember Brother Kyle saying that the word potential, that was one of his least favorite words. Um, because if you always just have potential, then you probably haven't grown much. Um, that's one thing that I've always remembered. And to close this out, I want to say that you know, some people are good at telling people what they need to do to grow in ministry. Uh, and I'm thankful for Brother Kyle's commitment not only to the growth of others, but to his own growth. I can honestly say that all the encouragement, all the classes, the trips, the ministry events, they wouldn't mean near as much without the genuineness, the faithfulness, and the consistency that I can see in his life. I've watched him grow spiritually, um, even though he's older than me. I've watched him grow spiritually and develop over the years. Um, I've watched him in the altar, uh, seeking for answers, seeking for direction, just like he would tell me to do. Amen. I'm very grateful to call this family my friends, and I want it to be clear that we love you and appreciate you and your ministry. You will all be in our prayers, and we're excited about what God is going to do with you and your family. Amen. There are some people that come into a place like a hurricane. They're loud, obviously powerful, and in a very short time, they make remarkable changes to the landscape of the setting that they are placed in. And then there are people that come in like a mountain stream, quiet, steady, and consistent. There are not a lot of visible indicators that they are there. And in fact, you may not even be aware that it's there until after the passing of time and the slow, steady consistency, a little stream completely changes the scenery around it. I'm here today to honor a little stream in my life, and that is Sister Amanda Kelly, except she was Jenkins when she came into my life. She came into my life as a youth pastor when I was 12 years old. I was insecure, fearful, and unsure of a lot of things about myself. But I was very sure about what it took to survive in the cold, war-torn arena that is being a teenager. There's some instructions for growing in a harsh climate. You look out for yourself and your own interests. You always check to make sure that you don't look like a fool. That has to be avoided at all costs, even if it means sacrificing kindness to those who are outcasts. The only way that you'll get anywhere in life is by being front and center and looking out for your own interest and watching your own back. And I was very sure of these things until Little Stream came along. Sister Amanda came in, and in a quiet and unassuming way, she changed my life forever. She taught me to honor the contribution of every person, no matter how small. 
we would sign up for specific things to be in charge of for youth service. I'm hearkening back to those days because my moniker was that I couldn't make it through a message without crying. So we'll just honor that today. It ranged, these things ranged from setup to speaking to games to bringing background music. So I would bring my little CD to class. This is back when we still had CDs. And I would hope that everyone would like it. And every time, no matter what my contribution was, if it was setting up chairs, bringing background music, coming up with a game, there would always be a little heartfelt thank you card that would come from Sister Amanda thanking me for my part in the service. And to a 12-year-old, it said, you're seen and you're important. These little notes would continue throughout my time in the youth group, thanking me, encouraging me, and speaking things into my life and giving wisdom to me. Those notes were a lifeline to me in times of hurt and pain, uncertainty, and dry seasons. She never knew it, but that little note, that little stream brought life and healing to me in some days that could have destroyed me. She taught me that true leaders are two things. Number one, they're themselves, who God designed them to be. And two, they are hard workers. Sister Amanda was never anything but herself, molded by God for a specific purpose. There's a funny thing that happens when you spend any time in her presence. And honestly, I've struggled in my attempt to describe this as I wrote my notes for today. And I reflected on this because the experience isn't something that you can just name. It's something that your heart and soul knows and feels, but it's hard to quantify it. You just know when it's there. The best way that I can describe it is that when you spend any time in the presence of Sister Amanda, you feel like you've come from weeks of nine to five, bumper to bumper traffic, horns honking, the smell of gasoline, rushing, stressed out, cramped. And then suddenly, you come into a wide open meadow and you feel like you can just breathe again. That's what she's like. Somehow, without even trying, she creates a space for you just to be you without having to be anything else. Because when someone is not afraid to be just who they are, it gives courage for others to do the same. And that is a beautiful gift. She taught me to not only give kindness first, but to believe the best in others and that you can trust that you'll be shown kindness by others as well. She loves everyone and accepts them just as they are, something that is truly difficult to find. She taught me the value of hard work and that the most important things a leader does are often behind the scenes, preparing, listening, serving, and praying. Her dedication, creative, out-of-the-box thinking, and consistency day in and day out made her someone that I continue to admire and look up to even today. In everything that Sister Amanda has done in my life, she's modeled love, consistency, I'm still trying to learn that one, and integrity. And above all that, though that's a pretty impressive list, she's taught me what I consider to be the most important lesson in ministry, as well as in the life of a Christian. Because you see, any stream, no matter how large or how small, only retains the power to completely alter the world around it if it remains connected to its source. Without that, it becomes useless, meaningless, and powerless. Sister Amanda, you've taught me many things, but most of all, you've taught me that staying connected to the source Staying connected to Jesus is the most important thing that I can do in my life, the life of my family, and the lives of those that I'm blessed to serve. Wherever we go and whatever we do, 
Let's stay connected to our source for all things are by him and through him. And that lets me know that in him, your stream and my stream will continue to flow side by side, even if there's an ocean between us or plains from here to Kansas. Until one great day when we sit in the presence of the one who sustained us, where there is a river proceeding out of the throne of God, clear as crystal, and the streams make glad the city of God. And until that day, we will watch as our little stream flows from Salem to Swansea and continues to change and impact everything that it comes in contact with. Thank you so much, and I love you. As we continue down the path that is the ministry of the Kelly family, one ministry in particular that Brother Kyle impacted was our Celebrate Recovery ministry. He accepted the challenge to help create an effective outreach to support those who needed support and to break the chains of addiction. His investment in this ministry has touched countless lives and changed many people. Brother Kyle has been a great teacher and role model to many of us in the Celebrate Recovery program. His ability to help others understand the Bible and apply it in their lives has helped me and many others grow in Christ. I asked a few people in Celebrate Recovery if they even like Brother Kyle. <laughs> and they all said yes. <laughs> then I asked, what is it about Brother Kyle that you like? And here are some of the answers I got. Brother Kyle is very inviting and not judgmental. He welcomes with open arms and singles no one out for being different. And someone else said, I like that he doesn't show prejudice towards any person, beliefs, or situations, and he tries to use any angle he can for a foothold to plant God's seeds. And someone else said, Brother Kyle is not judgmental and a powerful man of God. He loved me until I loved myself. He helped me through my court case, and I came to, and came to it to support me, even though I was in the wrong. He didn't shun me for that, and he helped make it a learning experience. Then, I like how sincere, kind, and genuine him and Amanda are. I can tell they both live in faith, and I admire their character. What I appreciate most about Brother Kyle is how clearly he explained the Bible and how plainly he put into words what it means to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for the time he's invested in me and the seeds he's planted in my life will continue to grow even if he's not here to see the full fruits of his labor. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says that there's a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. I'm thankful for the seasons we've had with Brother Kyle and understand it's time for him to spread the love of Jesus in Wales. We love you and we will miss you. And on behalf of Celebrate Recovery, peace. So the story continues. Every moment, every experience, Every ministry moment was coming to a culmination that no one really expected, but God knew all along. The year 2020 really was a year of vision because we see God opening his plan and his will in front of the Kellys. All the preparation, training, submitting to the will of God through the years have come full circle as we see the threads of this tapestry began and all the places that they have intersected to bring us to this moment. We've had front row seats as Brother Kyle developed into a trem <clears throat> tremendous preacher. It is impossible to detail every moment and there's not enough time to allow everyone to speak whose lives have been impacted by their ministry. 
that this is not the ending because we will go with them on this journey to Swansea, Wales. We're going to go with our love, we're going to go with our prayers, and we're going to go with our financial support. They have forever impacted us, and we believe the church that will be established in Swansea and the churches that will follow in the country of Wales will be an extension of the apostolics of Salem. We wholeheartedly support their acceptance of God's call on their lives. As we pull the thread of this story that now includes their precious children, Isaac and Cooper, we know God has allowed us this time together because it was all part of the plan. We pray the blessing of God on the Kelly family. There will always be a special place in our hearts and lives for the time God has allowed us to spend together.
let's give the Lord praise for Kyle and Amanda Kelly. And to all those who have participated today, you did top notch. And you did uh, probably because uh, we had some top notch leaders in Kyle and Amanda who have developed you and encouraged you and pushed you past your comfort zone. Brother Kevin, that motel that y'all went to, Brother Kyle probably made a secret deal with the taxi driver to say that all the rooms were filled, that he needed a cheap place. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I cannot describe what a load this family has taken off of this pastor because when a church begins to grow, the, the, the workload grows as well. And Kyle and Amanda have been a incredible support and encouragement to this pastor. The gospel, though, has a sending and going thrust in it. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel is the command. Isaiah in chapter 6 heard the divine question, the heaven's greatest dilemma. He heard the voice of the Lord say, who will go? Who shall I send? To which Isaiah responds, here am I, send me. I can speak for Amanda. I knew her as Amanda Ruski. She was a better softball player than most of the young men in this church. I remember her in her life saying, Lord, here am I, send me. I wasn't familiar as much with Kyle's send me moment until this encounter. And when Kyle mentioned to me, we feel the Lord calling us to Wales, I cannot describe the desperation and the celebration that happened in me all at the same time. This staff knows what a hole they will leave, and I know what a blessing they are going to be to the country of Wales. And Paul, in spite of counsel otherwise, stated to those who were obviously concerned, I must preach the gospel in Rome also. It would be very easy, comfortable, uh, familiar for us to say, no, you can't go. You're supposed to stay here. But the gospel must be preached in Wales also. Any man or woman who answers the call of ministry for their lives understands this means being sent into the battle at a moment's notice to a front or battle line you never imagined. So we train, we serve, we are faithful, knowing in ministry that our orders can change at any moment. You see, there's not one missionary, pastor, preacher who at some point in their life and their walk with God said in a moment of surrender, Lord, wherever you would have me go, whatever you would have me do, I'm willing. Every minister has said that to the Lord. And in that moment, his or her life is not their own. Oh, be aware, there are times when that surrender is challenged in their lives by comfort, friends, circumstances, finances, and the list is extensive. There's no greater weapon in the hands of a mighty God than a man and woman fully surrendered to the master's use. Surely, our God knows all things. Surely, our God is aware of where we will have uh, the greatest impact with our lives. 
Surely our God knows our frame and where we will best fit in his kingdom. Surely he knows the extenuating circumstances that come along with our surrender. So today, we celebrate. We celebrate. I know that's an odd statement. While all the tears are being held back and all the we are going to miss you's are being said, let it be noted that we are celebrating today. We celebrate that the power of the gospel has not diminished in its sending influence. Today, we send another harvester into the field of labor. What a fantastic privilege. Today, we plant another harvester to plant this precious seed of God's word to nurture the precious grain of souls in the nation of Wales. We celebrate for Kyle and Amanda are in the fact hasten for in let me start over Kevin I'm going to read it word for word we celebrate for Kyle and Amanda are in fact hastening the coming of the Lord and that is a benefit to every born again child of God those living and those who sleep for the gospel shall be preached in all the world and then the end shall come. So Kyle and Amanda, go preach. We're ready to go home. Memories, too many to tell. Kyle lived with us for a summer because he had an interest here. It wasn't Salem. It wasn't my unmown yard wasn't my pets it was Amanda make no mistake about it he was here on a mission <laughs> so many memories that are precious in life-changing moments so many battles won so many lessons learned the greatest of these for me as pastor the greatest memory that I have of Kyle and Amanda is how I have seen them grow. How I have seen them grow. Grow as individuals, grow in maturity, grow in wisdom. Grow as parents, they are awesome parents to their two sons, Isaac and Cooper. Grow in their calling, their teaching and preaching and leading. I remember Brother Kyle telling me, Pastor, I'm most comfortable teaching. I'm very uncomfortable preaching. So guess what I did? <laughs> I said, well, you're going to preach. <laughs> In fact, there were times I would have to encourage the sheep and let them know that it's not okay to miss church because Kyle is the one scheduled to preach. And may I add, that was mostly Amanda's family, Kyle. <laughs> I had to let certain ones know it is not okay to miss church because the pastor's not preaching. And may I also add, we are going to have the special benefit of knowing this couple as Brother Kyle and Sister Amanda. There are only going to be a few places in life going forward where they're known by these titles. In Wales, they'll be Brother and Sister Kelly. It'll sound all official. But when they come visit us, it'll be, hey, Kyle, hey, Amanda. <laughs> In fact, there were some that, there were some services, Brother Kyle, I have to say that uh, we knew you were growing. And in fact, you say, well, how can you say that? Well, I'll tell you this, congregation, every preacher has been in that situation thinking you had an awesome message <laughs> and folks slept through it. <laughs> We've all been in that position where we were growing as preachers. My personal one, I remember being frustrated when they didn't give me three weeks notice that I would have to preach. 
But what an amazing preacher Brother Kyle became. How he fed our souls. How he fed our souls. Let me say specifically, there were times where I would have the Sunday school hour in the teaching ministry and Kyle would have the preaching hour in the main service or vice versa. I can't, and Kyle can verify this, I can't even tell you the number of times that in the preaching and teaching, it was like me and him met before service and coordinated what we were going to say, but that never happened never happened. I had no idea what he was going to preach or teach. He had no idea what I was going to preach or teach. But yet God did an amazing work in feeding his people through the chosen vessel that he had chosen. I can say with assurance, Kyle and Amanda have been faithful to, the, to God in their calling. I can say without hesitation, they are ready. God is opening up a new chapter in their ministry. I believe they are ready. Kyle and Amanda, I want to let you know you are ready. Ready to handle the victories and not let it go to your head. Ready to handle the defeats and not take it personal. Ready to handle the difficulties and know that God has the answer in every difficult moment ready to handle the harvest that God has already prepared for you in Wales. You are ready. Hopefully you notice also in most of these comments that I'm personally making, you'll notice this is not about us. We could go into all the ways we're going to miss you. We could go into all the ministries that are going to have to go forward even in your absence. Yes, we will miss you. There are a list of responsibilities that now need to be disseminated. But this is not about the work you are leaving behind. No. We know. We know that if we cast our bread up on the water, it will come back to us. I want the magnitude of that to sink into this congregation today. Because everything that you are, Kyle and Amanda, Isaac and Cooper, your gifts, your abilities, your talents, your ministry, we are celebrating today because that, all of that will come back to us in some form or fashion, pressed down, shaken together, and running over a gift back to us so we don't give you today with that in mind we just know we can have heart today and celebrate today because nothing we give will not be given back to us by our Lord and Savior so we celebrate today <laughs> we are thankful today we are appreciative today in fact we are having our fat cow party, so to speak. We're not killing the fatted calf because what was lost is now found again. We are not celebrating because a broken life has found God's grace. No, we are not, we are not house flipping, we are party flipping. We are killing the fatted calf and celebrating today because a son is leaving. <laughs> Not because we are happy a son in the gospel is leaving. No, we're killing the fatted calf because a son from the father's table is taking the message of hope, the message of salvation, the gospel to Wales. We are celebrating because God's kingdom is advancing. We will worship today. We will praise God today because there's still a go in the gospel. So somebody give God praise today. Somebody give God honor today. Come on, somebody praise the Lord today for all his, his ways are perfect. 
Amen. That's all right. Let's stand and say, Lord, we honor what you're doing. Come on, give him praise. We honor what you're doing, God. We honor how you're moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I would like Kyle and Amanda and their boys to join me again up here in the front. Amen. We are going to charge this family. <laughs> charge. Wow. <laughs> We're going to finally charge them <laughs> for all the time they've spent here. No, we're going to give them a charge, and we're going to pray over them today. And I want them to know emphatically that we stand with them. And if anybody ever treats them bad, we're going to be like that older brother that says, Oh, no, you're going to come through me before you mess with them in every way. Paul, in his advice to young preacher, the young preacher Timothy makes one comment in the passage that may allude to Timothy's initial ordination or his ministry. In fact, in Paul's writing to Timothy, much of it is an encouragement to a young preacher from an older preacher. And so Paul encourages Timothy to embrace his calling, the ministry that God had given him by reminding him, Kyle, of the council of elders that had laid their hands on him and gifted him for ministry. I want to remind Kyle and Amanda that not only did they answer the call, and not only did we notice it, and not only were we impacted by it, but I would like to say that the elders, district officials, national officials, have all laid their hands on this couple because they saw the gifting for ministry in them. Don't ever doubt that. Paul said to Timothy a number of things that he needed to remember. And so I say these in, in conjunction with Paul to Kyle and Amanda. 1 Timothy 4, 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be the... Well, <laughs> you're getting on past that now, aren't you? But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading. I don't think that'll be a problem. To exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 1 Timothy 5, 21. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one another, doing nothing by partiality. 1 Timothy 6, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. 1 Timothy 6, 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, 
who hath who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting amen charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called which some professing have erred from the faith second timothy 4 1 i charge thee timothy therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season and out of season Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables, unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. To Isaac and Cooper, you were born here. You were born in the city of peace. We will surely miss you and have watched you grow into awesome young men. Let me say, the future of the Lord's kingdom is bright because of you too. One thing, though, there are times when in the lives of children and beyond their control, their parents make decisions that have the power to affect the rest of their lives. Your parents' decision to follow fully the call of God, no matter where that takes them or how much it costs, can be a double-edged sword in the life of their children. Let me go on record to say that I wish nothing more for Isaac and Cooper, you too. I wish nothing more for you than for you to cherish and value the surrender of your parents to the call of God. And not only be aware of and understand the value of it, but to follow the example of that surrender. Like Isaac of old, Isaac redigging the wells of his father Abraham. There will come a moment when Isaac and Cooper will both have the opportunity to say, Lord, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything for you. I surrender. And as I close this charge before we pray, as I was thinking about this moment, my mind uh, drifted back to uh, this wonderful couple's ancestry. <laughs> Some of them were in this church. Some of them are still in this church. Some of them are ministers in other areas. Uh, I was thinking about Kyle's grandfather, Brother Chambers. What a man of God. Led our organization for a number of years, impacted our organization in many, many ways. It gives us great honor to continue that legacy. In fact, I'm not sure they are aware of what's going on today. But I believe that in the spirit, uh, we can honor that faith and we can honor that heritage. Amanda's faithful family to God, I believe that needs to be honored as well. When Paul said to Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned love that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded it is in you also. Uh, Kyle and Amanda, this is not just about your story. You are standing on the shoulders of giants. And what we saw in your forefathers, we also see in you. And we celebrate that. 
For an old man standing here, not as old as he thinks sometimes, I believe the future is bright in the kingdom. So I would say also to Cooper and Isaac that the faith that is in their parents, we celebrate their willingness to go to Wales as well. And we believe God is going to use their lives and God is going to anoint them and God is going to use them for his kingdom. Well, it's getting late. And guess what? Brother Kyle's going to come in just a minute, and he's going to follow all this up. (laughs) But I'll go further to say, Paul said to Timothy, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou, because of what's in your grandmother and what was in your mother, I put you to remember to stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the laying on of hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, oh hallelujah, and of love and of a sound mind. I would like for the Kellys to stand. I would like for any of the Kelly family that's here today. Amen. I know Bryce and Nicole are here and and, uh, and Gary and Judy are here and Maddie's here and anybody else. I know we all claim the Kellys, but I want any of their family to come if they would. Amen. And make their up, uh, way up here with us. I want uh, my wife to join me today. Amen. I'd like for the licensed ministers, there are licensed ministers in this room, in this, or in our organization, I'd like for our licensed ministers to come today, if you would, and your wives, please, uh, licensed ministers and their wives, I want you to come, we're going to gather around the Kellys, and we're going to anoint them, now tonight at 4 o'clock, they're going to be a, a commissioning service uh, for our organization, and uh, this is going to be an awesome time, but today, we're going to pray for Kyle and Amanda. We're going to pray for their boys, and we're going to believe that God is going to use them in a mighty way. Anybody believe that? Amen. So would you stand together with us as we anoint them and pray over them? Amen. Ministry staff, let's just make a circle around them. Amen. If you would, in Jesus' name, Lord, I praise you. I worship you, God. Lord, as we anoint this family. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for Kyle right now, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, God. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you placed upon him, God. I thank you, Lord, for the heritage of faith. And God, I pray you use him in a mighty way, Lord. Give him wisdom, God. Give him direction, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. We now, Lord, commission angels to go before him, God, to prepare the way, Lord, for the harvest is ready. Lord, I thank you for this labor. I pray, Lord, you open up apostolic ministry in his heart. Lord, I pray you give him, Lord, the gifts that he'll need. I pray, Lord, that you let operate, Lord, the miraculous in his ministry. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray you touch Amanda. Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but power. And Lord, I thank you for the heritage of faith. I thank you for the day she said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And Lord, today, we're going to pray your anointing upon Amanda. Let her be a support to her husband today. Let her be a support to her family, Lord. Oh, Lord, anoint her, God, in the name of Jesus, to take the gospel to Wales, God. Touch Cooper, Lord. Lord, I pray you touch his life. Protect him, God. Let the angels of the Lord cover him, Jesus. Lord, I pray you would keep him, Lord. Oh, Lord, God in Jesus. I pray, Lord, you anoint him, God, with your spirit. Oh, Lord, help him to be a help to his parents, God, in their ministry, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord, and touch him, God. I pray, Lord, for Isaac today. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the hand of the Lord that is upon him, God. I pray, Lord, you would anoint him in a mighty way, God. Let his heart be open, Lord, to your word and your spirit. Oh, Lord, use him, God, for your kingdom, Lord. Touch him, God, as he supports his parents, Lord. I pray, God, you give him souls. Let him be a testimony. Oh, Lord, in a nation that needs you, Lord. Let your anointing be upon him in a mighty way. Oh, hallelujah. Praise your mighty name. Come on, church, let's give the Lord praise today. Oh, 
God, I give you glory and honor. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord. God good. I know it's been a little long, and that's okay. We don't do this very often. As you leave today, there's a card basket in the foyer. There is a skinny usher that'll be in the door. You'll notice him as real skinny. It's just a stand. That's for a love offering for Brother and Sister Kelly. Uh, checks can be made, uh, uh, made payable to the church, AOS is fine and there is a table in the foyer with PIM information I would encourage all of you that desire to partner with them with an offering once a month and there's a way you can register for that but you know what we want to know about where they're going and they're going to travel they're, they're going to travel all over the states uh, sharing their burden with others and we're going to take just a few minutes today to let them share uh, where they're going and what they're going to be doing. So I know you've been sitting a while. Just turn to somebody and tell them, I'm glad you're still here. Don't leave. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you, ministry staff, for coming forward. Amen. Let, let's give Brother Kyle and Sister Amanda another welcome as they come today to share with us. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm not going to preach. <laughs> um, I'm just going to try and share a few thoughts here as I look over everyone's heads without looking at anyone directly. Don't know if I can make it through that. I'm going to share a little bit and then my wife's going to say something and then we're going to let you hear from the boys. So they will be coming up, and then we have a, a, a video that we will play, a short one. Amen. Sister Sherry, you can take your seat right now. It's fine. I don't, just got to get in the last ones with Sister Sherry here and the music and, and trying to embarrass her as much as I can here in these last few moments. Uh, there's, there's been times I've come to church, and this is not about Sister Sherry now. <laughs> Even though I mentioned music, there's been times I've come to church and they've been singing and then I realize, oh, the songs are over. It's time for preaching. Lord, you can just move and have your way. You can just take over the service. But then Brother Gene still has to preach. So. <laughs> no, that definitely could have happened today and I would have been fine with that. Thank you so much to everyone for the kind words. Um, just thank you so much. I, I'm going to say thank you a lot because I really don't have the words to say uh, except for those I struggled with words to find. To those that have given to us already financially prior to today, thank you so much. It's humbling. It's humbling what people have done. And like I said, I don't have the words to convey what I feel besides humble and thankful beyond measure to each one. This decision that we have made is the hardest that we've ever made in our life. I had one that was a little bit harder when I had to talk to Gary about marrying his daughter. He reminded me he was not afraid of going back to prison. To make up for that, I bequeath my aisle seat to him. <laughs> but it's been a hard decision, not because of a house, a town, or furniture, but because of you. I want to assure you that we weren't trying to leave, but we were seeking God's will for our life, wherever it was, here, somewhere else. 
We fasted and prayed for months and months before we ever approached the subject, even with Brother Gene. Because we knew this decision carried a lot of implications with it beyond just our personal lives. It affects the church, it affects our families. But we know that God has called us. And honestly, the words that have struck closest to home that people have said of various times is that we believe that God has called you because we believe that you hear from God. That means more to me than anything else. I've had to sit myself down across the desk from myself. Those are interesting moments. And talk to myself <laughs> as I would someone else who had come to me feeling to do something different than what they were currently doing. And I realize as hard as it, as hard as it is to leave, if we had stayed and it was not the will of God, we wouldn't be happy and ultimately neither would you. Salem is not where I was raised, but it is the place where I grew up. Amanda and I moved here in 2002. You've seen all the stuff. I'm not going to rehash it. But we didn't know very little more than that this was where we felt God wanted us to be. And here we are, two kids and 19 years later. Salem has obviously affected my wife and my children as this is the only home they have known. But it's also changed me in ways that I never would have imagined. I started out by saying I was never going to Bible school. Then once I decided I was going, I said I would never marry someone from Bible school. Then once I found someone, I said I would never move to the place where she was from. And then I said I would never move to a small town. But I'm thankful that God had other ideas and a sense of humor. I'm thankful for each group I was able to be a part of, and I'm, I know I'm going to miss groups, starting with the junior high and then the youth. Thank you for letting us be a part of, our, of your life. Working in the ACA to the students and staff, thank you for enduring me. <laughs> for home friendship groups, before we really all had kids in that group, we dismiss it midnight or so. We quit singing when the dogs joined in. To the various life groups, or what we now call life groups, doing life together, sharing life in the various moments, spiritual, non-spiritual, if you want to say moments. Split sessions where we were able to share the word together and discover that we needed eight weeks to get through James. Life development where we were able to share our journey together, how God had brought us here. Celebrate recovery where we were able to share our struggles and victories. To the church in general, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life. Thank you for putting up with me this whole time. Thank you for showing me grace and mercy every time I messed up. It's been mentioned, but in the words of the late, great Brother Herb, he told me once he used to want to go out in the lobby when I preached. <laughs> but then he said, now I don't. <laughs> So to everyone who did not go to the lobby, thank you, even if you wanted to. <laughs> to every member of this church, thank you so much for impacting our lives. I truly believe God builds the church and fitly joins us together. I count it an honor and privilege to, be, to have been affected by every life that's represented here. There's so many who have blessed us throughout the years with encouragement, finances, time, countless other ways. Thank you for your faithfulness, just living life. There's people who have gone through circumstances unimaginable to me, and you've remained faithful to God. Thank you. Thank you for your testimonies, which strengthen me on a daily basis. Thank you to this church for your giving. This is a giving church. And let me just say that is a gift, not just to the people that come through and that you give to and the causes you give to, but it is a gift to the, enti to the entire body of Christ. Thank you for having good church. Thank you for responding to the moving of the Spirit on a consistent basis. And I know this is going out on live stream, but I just, and maybe this isn't the right way to say it, but hey. Sister Sherry can come to the music and fix it. But 
What others may say, that was great church. I just think, man, that's our normal church. (laughs) And it's because of the faithful saints of God who come expecting God to move and do something every single service. Thank you. To the staff of this church, who I've had the honor and privilege of working with over these last almost 11 years, thank you for your patience with me. (laughs) Thank you for for bearing me. We're into King James' words now. For your long-suffering towards me. For your patient endurance through the trials and travails of staff meetings, staff planning, staff retreats, staff infections, staff everything. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your ministries, your ideas, your visions. Thank you for letting me push you and pull you in different ways, like taffy. (laughs) Thank you for discussing Labor Day again and again and again and again. Thank you. Thank you for the hours and the energy you have put into this church. Thank you for working your jobs and still giving to this church like you did and still continue to do. Thank you for the words of encouragement and the prayers over the years. Thank you, staff, for growing. To the genes, there aren't quite words to say. I don't know how much you knew about me before I came here. I know I lived in their house, but I had other intentions that summer. He allowed me to come here. I don't know. This is a recurring theme. Now I'm starting to get a complex. He allowed me to come here without ever hearing me preach, I don't think. (laughs) Much to Brother Herb's regret. (laughs) And like I said, I don't know how much he really knew about me. But the trust you placed in me was undeserved but life-changing. Thank you both for having faith in us, for believing in us. Thank you for challenging us, for making me preach, for making me do things I didn't want to do. (laughs) Thank you for listening when it was needed. Thank you for talking to us when it was needed. Thank you for letting us stand, if not by your side, at least very close to you in the battle for this community. Thank you for letting us take part in the vision of this church. Thank you for leading with inspiration, integrity, compassion, mercy, and love. You have been and continue to be examples of what godly leaders should look like. And now, perhaps the hardest part, thank you for, after all of that time and investment to every member of this church, to the staff, to the genes, after all of the energy and investment in us. Thank you for releasing us to another part of the kingdom. While missionaries have come by and will continue to come by and let you know that you're a part of what God is doing, which you are, (laughs) know that whatever we do and wherever we go, we don't have a choice because of your investment in us We can't help but take you with us in the apostolic church with us because you are a part of us. How much you have instilled in us, how much you have invested into our lives. We can never repay what you have done, but we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I thought you guys might pray for us, (laughs) put a slide on the screen. (laughs) I was with Brother Kevin and Kyle in that hotel room. (laughs) We slept on top of the bed, (laughs) fully clothed. I don't think we had anything. I think we left it all in the car and they took it away 
And we were like, we have nothing. But we had each other. <laughs> Kids ran. When we walked in that door, that man, that tow truck driver took us in there and kids ran to get inside and we just let the door shut and it locked behind us. <laughs> we were so scared, but we made it. My friend Wheat is here. Thank you for coming. We were, we kept trying to figure out when to have coffee and we were going back and forth and I finally said, Wheat, um, if you come to church, we can have coffee at church. <laughs> so we're having coffee today. So this is the best coffee break I've ever had. The most humbling coffee I've ever drank. <laughs> no, but um, thank you all for, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read what I've written. I don't know if it's going to make sense. I've written so many things in so many notebooks and tried to figure out how to say how do you say everything you want to say to so many people? So this morning, I just crumpled up everything else and threw it away. So I just, I have a few things I want to say. A lot of thank yous. I think mine might beat all of your thank yous. But I've got more written. <laughs> I'm going to say it a lot more than you is what I'm trying to say. But thank you for being the best possible church ever. Thank you for being the hands of the Lord that helped to mold me and my boys and Kyle too, because he's come quite a ways. <laughs> thank you for doing ministry, even though it may have been hard or you may have had better things to do. Thank you for raising me in church, in this church. Mom and Dad. Thank you for kids ministry with Max the monkey. Raining candy. And I tried to think how we rained it. How you guys rained it. I didn't rain it. Somebody, I don't know if you stood on top of the church. I tried to rack my brain all morning trying to figure out how we rained candy. But we rained it. And we all got to get the candy. You guys rained it. I didn't rain it. Teaching us to spell apostolic when we moved into the building over there, we had no clue, but Sister Mana, she taught us in our Sunday school class. She said, you're going to need this, how to spell apostolic. <laughs> we probably didn't even know how to say it, much less spell it. Thank you for hay rides and youth events, rallies, and driving us everywhere for something for the youth to do. Thank you for being my protectors and seat savers on the bus. Thank you for standing with me in line at the phone booth <laughs> to call home at camp. Thank you for supporting me <laughs> on my first missions trips. Thank you for answering my flags at school and now my boys. Thank you for stopping by IBC and seeing me every once in a while. <clears throat> Thank you for postcards that you sent. Thank you for jobs you gave me and probably wanted to redo. Thank you for letters in the mail and for favorite desserts. Thank you for trusting us with your youth, for letting us make many mistakes and letting us have a lot of fun. Thank you for stretching and pushing me, for adventure, for love. Thank you for building and growing my faith. Thank you for preaching the truth into my life. Thank you for helping me build the altars in my life. And thank you for loving me, for loving my family. I know that this is the best church. This is the best church. And these are the best pastors that you could ever have. If you're sitting here today... You're sitting in the best place you could ever possibly sit in Salem. God, I know we're supposed to give the part of Wells now as well. The past week has been really grueling. <laughs> it really has. I've never felt so many emotions in my entire life. I never felt 
I felt like somebody took Play-Doh. You know how kids do when they, they get all the Play-Doh? You're like trying to keep red and yellow and orange and green, and you don't want them to get it all mixed up, but it's like somebody just took all the Play-Doh and smushed it all together, and that's all my emotions. Everything you, that you can possibly feel is in that ball of Play-Doh. But last week, we were at training for, um, I don't know what they were training us for. <laughs> I had a gun in my face. They took his wallet. We were under the desk. They trained us how to, how to drive, like if you're, I don't remember what that was for, but if you, <laughs> if you think somebody's following you, get in your car, go to a different location and buckle your children in. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, they, they did all this training, all this training for us and um, put us in live or uh, what do you call them? They pretended they were the bad guys coming. We had to react. They taught us how to react to it. And then on the way home, we had to run some errands yesterday and so we got out we went inside and I told Kyle I said I'm gonna take the boys and go back out to the car and I got out there in the door standing wide open on the car I'm like they got us <laughs> they got they got everything and that's that was my first thought was like man we've already gotten we've they've already taken everything I we didn't do and then we got in there and the door was open and I was looking around my purse was there the keys to the car were there the billfolds were there, the, the kids' stuff was there, but I just left the door open on the, <laughs> on the van. So it's a good thing we have another week of, of training. I missed it already. <laughs> I've already messed it up. No, but back in the beginning when Kyle talked about it, but um, Sometimes the Lord starts doing something in you, and you don't know exactly what it is. But the only way that I can describe it is it was a stirring, a stirring that happened inside. And it was like everything you thought of and tried to fit into that place, it was like, no, it's, you know, it's not right. What is it? What is it? But I don't believe that God was just stirring us. I believe that God is stirring his people I believe that when we, um, we came to our decision of wells, that it was God's stirring of our hearts. If you feel stirred or unsettled, God has placed something inside of you. He saved you for a reason. There are ministries sitting here, sitting inside of you, that God is waiting to open up. There's ministries that are waiting to be dreamed. God has saved you to do a work for him. And when he saved you, he's seen you ministering to people. He's seen you doing those works for him. He's seen you doing the ministry that he has placed inside of you. I'll tell you one of the hardest things. Is, is this somebody's water? My mouth is so dry. Does it have? Sorry. I had to take cold medicine or something this morning my mouth I feel like it's just full of cotton all day but I believe probably one of the hardest things that we did in this decision was to take a step of faith I remember the day that we had to uh, speak with the jeans I was a nervous wreck I was like here we are oh I was a nervous wreck <laughs> I didn't hardly say anything I couldn't even think of anything to say all I knew was that was the step of faith that we had to take. Taking a step of faith. So a lot of times we get, um, we get preoccupied with life, the things that we have to do, the job we have to go to, the bills we have to pay, the kids that we have to take care of. And we forget that there's so much more. There's so much more. And God has a plan for you. He has a ministry. He has a dream for you. We are living in the last days, and there's no doubt about it. He's getting a people in place to bring in the greatest revival that this world has seen. I'm believing it. I'm believing that he is. He's ready to take you on a ride. 
And it's the, the alarm is sounding for you to get into place, for you to find your place, to you, for you to get your ministry, to find your dream, and to step into that, to take a step of faith. I know, I know it is a terrifying thing to step out and to do something, but the Lord will be with you. He will guide you. He will provide what you need to get to that place. It's time to fly. I want you guys to pray for us. I know that you will. I had it somewhere in my notes. Maybe it was in the ones I got rid of or left over there, but Sister Jean said it. We're, we're, not, we're not leaving, but it's an extension. And I believe I couldn't go. I couldn't do this without knowing that you guys were with us. I just feel like we're one big long arm stretching clear across the ocean. We thank you guys. Thank you for what you're doing. Didn't know she was done or not, or if she was getting another drink. Or... And then I'm, we're going we're gonna to do a little, I promise, it's not going to be very much longer, I promise. But um, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know a whole lot about whales. Now, um, I think I'm going to get t-shirts printed up that say, save the crossed out, and then whales, save whales. I've, I've heard all of the language study, Ooh. you know, I've, so... This is not an ecological movement where we're going to save whales, but not the mammals. So the boys are going to come, and they are going to share with you some information about whales. Make sure you introduce yourselves. I'm not doing that, but... I'm also sorry if I sound a little nasally. I've been dealing with sinus issues. But I wanted to just thank a few people. And my first people I wanted to thank were Justin and Stephanie. And I don't know if they're here, but I wanted to thank them for being some of the, they're back there. I wanted to thank them for being some of the best people that I've ever met in my life. And for being my youth pastor and for helping not just me, but all the youth that they have taught. And for taking us on youth trips, for giving us embarrassing moments to laugh about, and for the spiritual moments that they've given us. And then I wanted to thank the youth group, who most of them I've grown up with my entire life. And that's going to be the hardest part to give up, is leaving all you guys. And then to all you guys for just helping us get through and being there for our family. Um, I would like to thank my <coughs> friends and my family and also the church. Did you know the Welsh flag is thought to be one of the oldest national flags still in use, originating in the 4th century? It goes back to a myth which talks about a war between a red dragon and a white dragon, which represented England. It was not officially recognized until 1959. Did you know the St. David's flag is the second flag of Wales? It represents St. David from the 6th century, who is the patron saint of Wales. Did you know the, that Wales has 600 castles, which is more castles per square mile than any other country in the world? Did you know that Wales is about the size of Massachusetts? Did you know over 20% of Wales is in national parks? Did you know that, did you know Mount Everest was named after the Welshman Sir George Everest? Did you know the Welsh language is one of the oldest living languages in Europe? It's dated up to 4,000 years ago. Did you know St. David's is the smallest city in the United Kingdom with with a population of only 2,000? Did you know 50% of people who fly are on an aircraft with wings made in Wales? Did you know the Welsh Royal Mint makes 5 billion coins for annually 60 countries? Did you know the equal sign was introduced by Welshman Robert Record? Did you know the world's first radio message was sent by Marconi from Lavernock Point, Wales? Did you know the heir to the throne of Great Britain always holds the title of Prince of Wales? Did you know 
the royal family always uses Welsh gold for their wedding rings? Did you know there are 3 million people in Wales, but there are 11 million sheep? Did he know? <laughs> did he know the second longest place name in the world is in Wales? It is spelled L L A N F A I R P W L L G Y W Y N G Y L L G O G E R Y C H W Y R N D R O V W L L L L I N G Y S I L I O G O G O G O C H. Did you know the national emblems of Wales are the daffodil and the leek? Did you know the Welsh word for Wales is Kimru and means friend? Did you know Wales has had over 15 revivals in its history? Did you know there is no established UBCI church in Wales? Did you know partners in missions is the way we get to go to the field? Did you know we only need 220 partners in missions for our family to get to Wales and we'll leave one right here for you, for for your pastor. This is for you, Brother Gene. And then just to give you a little visual about Wales, we're going to show you a short video, about three minutes, if they want to play that.
All the glory to the God of love. Thank you for helping us with that video, doing that for us. Wales is a land of great beauty, has sweeping coastlines, pristine beaches, rugged mountain ranges, and dense forests. With over 600 castles, it's got more castles per square mile than any other country in the world. It's a land of revival. Over the last 300 years, roughly, there have been 15 distinct revivals throughout the nation. The stories are true. Hymns could be heard coming out of the coal mines as the coal miners converted en masse. Horses and donkeys had to be retrained in the mines because they'd only heard curse commands up until that point. Circuit judges would show up for weekly and monthly court appointments, and there would be no cases. People would visit towns, and they would be empty, and when they'd ask where everyone was, they would be pointed to the local chapel. Bars and taverns shuttered their doors. The dance halls closed for lack of business. Two revivals had over 100,000 conversions in just a few years. At one point, a new church was being built every eight days in Wales. The Azusa Street Revival can find its roots in the 1904 Welsh Revival with Evan Roberts. But today, in the land of beauty, the land of castles, the land of revival, there is no UPC work. It remains a barren spiritual landscape. The remnants of the miraculous, the residue of revivals past are still there, but Few present-day reminders remain now except for vacant chapels and churches serving just as historical landmarks. But God gives his people a promise through the prophet Isaiah. It was on the screen, Isaiah 58 and 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in. I believe the repairer, the restorer, the builder of waste places has a work that he wants to do in the nation of Wales. I believe that there is a harvest yet in the soil of Wales. I believe that there are seeds that were sown even in revivals past from prayers previously prayed which are still going to bear fruit for us in the coming years. And so we're asking for your prayers and your support in this endeavor. It's not something which can be accomplished just through us, but as we unite together. The quote on the screen, on the screen, the, screen <laughs> the Welsh revivalist Evan Roberts said this, We cannot organize revival, but we can set our sails to catch the wind from heaven when God chooses to blow upon his people once again. You know, I know, we cannot bring revival we can't bring revival to Salem. We can't bring revival to Wales. We can't organize enough, plan enough, but we can set our sails. We can be ready to catch the wind of revival that God is sending, that God is doing right now in this community, in cities around this nation, and, and, and nations around the world, that the wind of the Spirit is blowing. So I'm challenging you today to set your sails. I'm challenging you today to keep fasting, to keep praying, to keep being faithful, to keep reaching, to keep doing what you know to do. And I know that doesn't bring revival, but when the winds of the Spirit begin to blow. I want to be ready to go wherever God takes me. I want to be ready to do whatever God calls me to do. And I'm asking you to stand this morning. And I'm going to ask you to pray with us. I want you to pray with us for Wales, that God will move, that His Spirit will sweep across the land, and you're a part of it, that we are a part of it. And I would ask you to help pray for us that we can set the sails, whatever that means when we get there. But I'm believing for God to move and touch. Join with me in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful, Lord, that you still move, that your gospel still works, that it's still true, it's still saving, it's still delivering, God. And Lord, we're believing you for a mighty move of your spirit in the nation of Wales. Lord, you see everything that's gone on in that country throughout the years. You've seen uh, the revivals that you've poured out before, God. People that have been filled with the Holy Ghost before. Prayers that have been prayed. And Lord, I'm praying for a harvest of souls, God. That those seeds still in the ground will bear fruit, Lord. I'm praying that the winds of your spirit would move one more time, God. 
Oh, no, I want us to pray for this community. I want us to pray for Salem. Come on, I'm believing the winds of the Spirit of God are going to blow through this community like never before. Oh, we're thankful for every person that's been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But it's not over yet. It's not finished yet. God has greater things in store. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we believe you, Lord God. We believe you, Lord God. Now, why don't you give him praise right now? Why don't you thank him for what he's doing? Amen. I am here to present some gifts. So, Jim, I know you're in the other service watching my kids. I'm the new improved. You're welcome. <laughs> How do you follow that up other than we got you some stuff, guys? Woo! So, Isaac and Cooper coming up here with me first. We got you some stuff. Isaac, I was having a hard time listening to everybody talk about you. Not that it wasn't true, but because I know some stuff about you, too. <laughs> I haven't had a microphone in a year, Matt, but <laughs> uh, when you see a Hearst, I want you to think about that moment. Yeah, that's all I got to say, buddy. That's me and you. Yeah. And Cooper, I want you to record every oral report you ever give in your life and send it to us, please. I want to watch every single one of them and all the great things that you're going to talk about. Seriously, he's the most astounding person. He's going to be a speaker because it's amazing to listen to. So Cooper, here's to you, buddy. And Isaac, to you as well. We love you. Got some gift cards. And to these guys. Brother Kyle, there are three things that come to mind whenever I think about you. I think about, first of all, coming to Sunday morning, uh, the first service during the preaching, the teaching, and seeing the immaculate lines of chairs. That's the first thing I, I think of. I was on the very first chair, chair setup team with him, and I have to ha confess something to you before you go. Uh, I would sometimes mess up the slanted chairs just to see you go back and fix them. And sometimes our schedules wouldn't work out where Taryn and I would have to come you know, like before you to set some up, and I would tell Taryn, uh, just, Brother Kyle's gonna fix them anyway, so who really cares where they go? <laughs> The second thing I can think of whenever I think about you and your ministry is donuts. Uh, that's the second thing I can think of, coming and enjoying a teaching session with Brother Kyle, and he talk about his donuts, and now that he has some type of gluten thing, it's like the donuts bit you back. So we would like to present you, Brother Kyle, with do not forget us, donut forget us. And the last thing that I remember whenever I, there are loads of things, but one that stands out is I remember the times during your lessons <laughs> that you'd be very vulnerable and honest about your life, and I appreciated that. And there's a saying around my house now because of you, and if I'm doing a home improvement project and I mess up, it's a, it's a Brother Kyle. Um, <laughs> so uh, Tim and Amy, have the bit that took a bite out of you and every time you see this just remember of all those times that scars and those times where you messed up and were vulnerable about it amen we love you we appreciate you we have scars to go with you to wales because of us thank you brother andy As I said before, there's a gift basket in the foyer if you'd like to leave something for the Kellys. There's a skinny usher right in the door as you leave. Checks payable to the church, AOS. We'll make sure all that goes to Kyle and Amanda. If you want to partner with them, uh, I encourage you to do that. That is a monthly partnership that you can uh, sign up for today. Be aware of that. Uh, 
amazing, amazing day. And I don't apologize for taking our time doing this today. Uh, I will say you saw some of those pictures on the screen. Kyle took a group of 40 plus teenagers uh, and chaperones to Scotland a number of years ago. Let me just say that we are going to, uh, we're not sure if they're going to have a church started. It's not going to matter, but we're just going to all come over. Everybody that will, we're going to have a big missions trip to Wales. And we're just going to, we may stay for a couple months. Who knows? So they won't have to worry about that. We'll just organize it and just show up one day. Say, hey, we're all here. Uh, I will say during that, during some of the older young people that are here, we had three vans going to O'Hare Airport. We had so much luggage, we started blowing out tires. These were the church vans. If you understand liabilities, I was having a meltdown. Uh, we blew out three tires. There's a spare for every van, okay? And we had three vans. We used all the spares. We were just a few minutes away from O'Hare, running late. We had the fourth blowout. Chris Bloom is not here today, but he's the guy that would crawl up under the van, unstrap the, 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 the spare and get it out. We had no more spares, and we were sitting there wondering what we were going to do. And I tell you, to this day, Chris Bloom crawled under the van again. There was another spare. It's true. So now it's not the fourth man in the fire. It's the fourth spare in the fire. That happened on that missions trip. He said, Pastor, I have no idea where it came from. We, we took it down. We put it on. There's another one under there. I said, put it on. We got to get to O'Hare. So God is good. Amen. Isn't he? Yes, he is. And we give honor to the Lord for all that he's done. We want to pray for our special needs today. We don't want to take, uh, we're going to take the time. We don't want to miss these. We have a number of folks that need prayer today. Brother Lonnie is here today. We're glad he's here and he's recovering. But we're going to continue to pray that God would give him complete healing. Amen. Amen. Sister Teague is here. She needs a healing in her body. Kenny Cripps, we're going to continue to pray for him. Sister Betsy Wilgos is not here today. She's recovering from a surgery, but now she's having some pain issues. And we're just going to pray uh, for all of those that need healing. There will be a number of names on the board. Let's take a moment now and pray for these that are needing healing. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. And Lord, as we... As we come to a close in this service, we're just asking you to touch all of these that are needing a physical healing in their body. I pray you would touch Kenny Cripps today. I pray, Lord, for the healing power of your blood to touch his body, anoint the doctors. Lord, you're able, God, to do what chemotherapy cannot do. And, Lord, I ask you to touch him and his body in Jesus' name. Touch Brother Lonnie today. We thank you for the good report. We're going to believe you for even better things in the name name of Jesus. Touch Betsy Wilgos today. God, give her healing in this pain in her back. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for your blessings and bringing her through. And I ask you to touch her, touch Sister Teague today. And all of these that need a touch from you, Lord, we know you're an answer, answer a prayer answering God. And I ask you to move in touch in Jesus' name. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. I do, I do think I have a pertinent announcement. I think maybe going forward from now on, whatever we do on Labor Day should be the Kelly Family Labor Day celebration. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we'll, we'll find a drill bit or something to name after them. I'm not sure what it'll be. Amen. God bless you. Our ushers are going to dismiss you today. Amen. Should we, should we let... Should we do the penny march where everybody comes by the Kellys and shakes their hand? You're going to go back there? Okay, wait. We're going to let the Kellys go back there in the back. You can greet them as you're leaving. Amen. We're going to let the Kellys go in the back. Amen. God bless you. Greet somebody. Our ushers will dismiss you so that we can leave safely. God bless you. Thank you for being in church today. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed.